Uh, what's going on? So, uh, I'm gonna show y'all some of my instruments I got here. A little bit of my collection going on. So, I'm gonna go through uh, a little bit of everything, what I got. Uh, so, you know, it took several years to build up what I got here today. So, I'm just gonna start off with the piano. It's a uh, Williams Rhapsody 2. Nothing special, but it is a pretty good piano. It's got weighted keys. So, you know, it's a pretty good keyboard. It's got different sounds, different effects on it. So, it's nothing special, but it's a good starter piano if you want to start playing, I guess. Uh, it does me good for what I do. Got a mandolin, got a cheap old violin up there. I like to play a lot of bluegrass. So, I typically don't play those, but here and there. Mostly just play my Taylors if I want to play some grass. That's my orange, that's an RT35. Does me real good for what I do in the house. As you see, it's not a big room, it's probably, I think it's only like a 12 by 12. So, that's a 35 watt, it's got reverb built in, it's got a tuner. It's got a uh, clean and dirty channel, so you swap between the two. It does pretty good, it sounds pretty good in here. If you go into like low nerve or something, you can tell, you know, if you, you need to perform, you need something bigger, but it does real good in the room. Here's my Fender Rumble 25. I've had it for a long time. I think it was like a hundred bucks back when I got it. So it does be pretty good. I got it thinking it's gonna be a good guitar amp, but I think they're made for more bass. But it done fine anyway. I always wondered why I didn't get that, you know, distortion tone. But, you know, I didn't know back in you need pedals and all that stuff, so. That's my Rumble 25. Uh, here's my Ibanez RG, uh, not RG, it's a, I don't even remember. SRX 500. So that's my Ibanez SRX 500. It's real nice bass. That's the first, that, that's what got me into playing, really. So I think I bought that one, it was like, I thought I got it for 200 bucks off eBay and it's in mint condition. It's there's not a single thing wrong with it. No scratches. I've I played a lot of stuff on it. So it's got active pickups, of course, but it does real good. I think it didn't have the knobs on it when I bought it. So I threw knobs on it. That was it. Took it apart and cleaned it. So now we're going to get to the guitars. This is my most recent purchase. It's a Affinity Squire and somebody had put Double humbucker was sitting on the middle, so if you know, they only come with, uh, if you get the humbucker model, so I got the humbucker near the bridge, so somebody's put a dual humbucker pick guard in it, so. It, it don't sound the best, you know, but it gets by. I think I paid a hundred bucks, so. And it's pretty much in mint condition. The guy lied to me, and it's got a stripped out uh, tremolo bar, but. It is what it is. I don't care. I'm not going to complain for a hundred bucks. So then I got my uh, Fender Strat. It's a Mexican Strat. Uh, it's got a gloss maple fretboard. It's got the cream mint pit guard. It's the Surf Pearl. So it's got a lot of flake in the paint, as you can see a little bit in the video there. It's got the uh, floating bridge system in there. It's real nice. Uh, it's just the standard single coils. Sounds real nice. So that's just my Mexican strap. I got that one brand new. It's got the Scott strap on the back of the neck. Real good purchase. I'd recommend one of those any day. If you're trying to get a strap and you can afford it, get that over the Squires any day of the week. Especially for the bridge. I hate the bridge on that Squire. So now we're going to get to uh, the next cheap one that I got. This is a uh, Ibanez uh, RG120. So I picked this up off of Do for 80 bucks, I think. And pretty good shape. It's got a couple nicks and stuff here and there, but it's a good sounding guitar. It's got a real thin neck on it. It's a real flat radius neck. But 
it sounds real decent for an eighty dollar guitar. I don't know what they went for back in the day when they sold. I think they stopped making them late two thousands or early the teens. So I don't remember. So this is my real first electric guitar that got me into playing. If I can get out of here. So this is my ESP LTD M100 FM. Another eBay find. I think I bought this one for 200 bucks too. Same as the bass. And it's got the Floyd. It's got the double humbucker. The guy told me it was a Seymour Duncan's in there off eBay, but I really don't know if it is. Because usually it says Seymour, but I don't see nothing resembling uh, Seymour's. So I think they might just be stock pickups. Who knows? I don't know. So it's got a, he also claims a Fender three way switch. Who knows? But it's got a nice maple top well veneer. You know, it's a nice guitar. I don't play it much because I don't care for Floyd. But it's a good sounding guitar. It's got a flat radius neck, the jumbo frets. So that's four of them. So now I'm going to get into my PRS as I get into this one first. So this is my SE Custom PRS. So bought this off a dude off Craigslist. I actually stole it out from under a dude. I feel sort of bad for it, but you know, the seller agreed, so I can't be too upset. So it's stock is a 2015 model. So I still got the SC Custom up there and it's not as nice as the logo on the other one. So it was a brand new guitar, pretty much. It still had the plastic wrap on the covers on the back and barely any use. I don't think the dude played it at all. He claimed he was gonna buy another guitar with the money that I sold this one, or he sold this one to me for, but it don't even look like he played this one. So this is uh, my Parry Smith, Zach Myers, SC Custom. That's something I wanted for a long time. Shondell was, uh, well, still is pretty much one of the greats, um, you know, the stuff I listen to. So this is Zach Myers, SC Custom. I like it a lot better than the green one he had a few years ago. Uh, it's a real nice guitar. Uh, it sounds a little muddy, but it is what it is. I don't have time to upgrade pickups. It's got brass. <clears throat> it's the hollow, semi hollow. It's got clear knobs, which is real nice. My, the biggest downside to this guitar is the grain goes two ways. If you look at it from the top, it's real deep colored. If you look at it from the bottom, it's deep colored. So that's why it gives off the tone of a little bit different top, which I wish it didn't do that. That's a little funky. But it is what it is, you know. I ain't gonna send it back for that. I love this guitar's neck. It's a satin finished neck and you can see where they transition from gloss to satin. And uh, I think it's a mahogany body. But it's a real nice guitar, it's real smooth. It's got the, th the thicker neck on it than the other PRS. Then it's got the veneer on the headstock which is very nice. The downsides, the tuners, is cheap plastic tuners. But overall, it's a fantastic guitar for the money. And that guitar shreds well. That one will shred well. The Fender, that's a blues master, I tell you. I love the Fender. The, the Fender there and the two PRSs, those are the main ones I use. So that's the real good ones I really enjoy to play. I don't really play the other three unless it's just for certain sounds that I want on different songs. So that's about it. Uh, get to the drum set. It's just a Yamaha stage custom, uh, 14 inch snare. It's a 10, 12, 14 Tom with a 22 bass, I think. Um, then it's got the Zildjian L80s on it. It's real nice for inside and it's got the Remo silent strokes. So that's real nice to have. It's real balanced in the house because I keep the bottom head on for residents. So it still has, uh, you know, it still has a good tone to the drum instead of it just being just a mesh head with nothing on the bottom. I'll move my playing chair out of the way here. Now we'll get into the acoustics. So here is my Mitchell 12 string acoustic guitar. I think these are only about 300 bucks. 
but the quality of these guitars is, you know, it's very high compared to some of the stuff that you can buy. So, you know, it's got a very nice inlay around the sound hole. The bridge is pretty decent. It's nothing fancy, but it, you know, it's nice. The neck's a pretty good profile. Turn it around. You got this nice inlay all the way down to the, to the back of the guitar. So it's just those little things that make this, you know, a pretty nice guitar. You know, it's only 300 bucks. You know, it's a Mitchell, which I'm sure you could buy a Yamaha or something. I don't know. I've never priced them, but you know, so for the same price range. But the guitar sounds very nice. It's an electric acoustic. Plugs in, sounds very well. The only problem I had was the neck warped on me. So I had to uh, fix the neck. It took me a while to fix it. And then I had to adjust the bridge. And the action is where I want it now. So that was a little aggravating. But with the cheaper models like this, it's to be expected something happened to you. So this is the first acoustic I ever got. It's uh, the Fender uh, Cardboard Series uh, FA-135. It's full out laminate. Sounds like junk, but I didn't know it at the time. I just seen Fender and thought it was all right. I think it was like 170 bucks or something. It wasn't nothing fancy. It's just painted black on the back and sides, the neck. It's gloss on the neck too, so you can't really, you know, go too fast or anything but the action is so high on this thing it's ridiculous I've tried to fix it but it is what it is that's just uh I think that's just like a decal and they you know clear coated over it so it's a pretty cheap guitar it's a budget I mean if you're wanting to get something you know for your child or something I still wouldn't get this guitar I'd probably get an orange wood for your child those are probably going to be a whole lot better quality than these. People just buy them for the hype because it's a Fender. So here's another Fender acoustic. Uh, I got this one for free. It's got some damage down there. It's missing a uh, peg, but the string manages to stay in every time I change them. This is the campfire guitar. This is a guitar I don't care about hurting. And it sounds very good. I think these guitars are probably around $200, $220 new. I'm not really sure. But this is a very nice sounding guitar for free. And for the money, because it's only, you know, a few more dollars than that one. So, you know, it's a pretty nice guitar. <coughs> Sorry. But it does me pretty good. It's a campfire guitar. I've beaten banged it. I've been in 20 degree weather with it all night. And uh, the neck's still straight, so... Here's my first Taylor. I wanted a Taylor for so long and I finally got me one. I never could manage to spend more than a couple hundred dollars on a guitar because it hurt my feelings, but this is what set it off for me. That's why I have all those. So this is just a 110E, just the basic of the basic. Spruce solid top. It's got the ebony uh, headstock, ebony fingerboard. And then they have any bridge. It's got their uh, whatever setup, electric setup. Sounds real good. It's got the same setup as that other Taylor we'll get into. It's got a walnut back and sides, which I think looks a whole lot better than the mahogany back and sides that they had before this. Uh, I don't remember what the neck was, like Sapole or something like that, but it's a real nice sound guitar. That's why I used to learn all my bluegrass on. So. Did a lot of bluegrass on that guitar. It's a real good learning guitar. And it's real nice. I still really enjoy to play it. Honestly, that one probably plays better than this one. This one's the newest one. This is a Taylor 214 CE Deluxe. I got tired of not having the cutout on my other Taylor. So I ended up wanting to upgrade. So this is the best option. I don't care for the American models until you get to the 600 series. So, you know, I don't care if it's made in Mexico or America. Don't make no difference to me. The quality is the same exact. The only difference is your bracing on these lower model tailors. Uh, and they're made in Mexico. I mean, 
People can argue with that, but let's get real. They're all good quality guitars. Cause Ebony's Ebony, Ebony, Ebony. I mean, Spruce Top. It's all the same. They use CNC machines, so, you know, I'm not really concerned on where it's made. Even those guitars. The PRSs aren't American, but those are just as good to me as if I bought it from the American made. The only difference is electronics, the tops aren't as thick on the maple cap, etc. But they work just fine. They're high quality guitars. So this one's got the nice inlay around the sound hole. It's got a different pick guard. I like to upgrade that pick guard to an ebony pick guard. But this comes with the nice Taylor tuners. And it's uh, got a nice grain neck on it, which is very nice. Uh, it's got Indian rosewood back and sides. Hard to see for the lighting, but it's a very nice back and sides compared to some of the American models that you get when you start getting up there to 1999, I think for the 300 model plus. So that's too much for me. This one was too much for me, but uh, with it being the deluxe, it has a couple different little things to it. Plus it comes with the hard case that all the Americans come with. So it's all good to me. There's a few pedals. Uh, I really like to get more, but I just ain't got the time or the money. So that's what I got so far. I just got me a Vox uh, Wah pedal. I ripped them off. There's a guitar center. I got that one for 70 bucks, brand new. I think they're 115. The only reason they discounted was because they didn't have the power cable, but I got power cable, so it don't matter. I got a cheap digital delay, Boss, uh, Pawn Shop Death Metal, Digitech pedal, piece of junk. Got a Electro Hallmark Soul Food, got a Loop Station, RC2, it's an older one. Then I got a Route 66 compressor and uh, Overdrive. They're all right. They do the job. Uh, random books, TV, whatever. Then in the closet, got my cases, my bags. Um, got another drum set sitting in the closet and stuff. And then I got my uh, real cymbals and my real heads for my drum set for when I perform. I haven't performed in a while, but the last time I did, it was about 120 degrees outside. And uh, that was the last performance I caught it done. So that's pretty much the collection I got. Just got some straps there. Got a tailor strap. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm about to move to Alaska. So I'm debating on uh, keeping or selling some, but I'm probably going to buy more. So yeah, that's about it.